Come on, just one more shot. Just one more shot and he's done. Dude, you're making me reload already. Just stay still. Stop jumping, man. You're driving me mad. Finally, I'm going to have to get myself some therapy after that session. Alright, so I've finished messing around. So in this video, I'm going to find out if it's worth getting yourself an old i7 processor that's worth about £15, which is around about 20 US dollars. And can you game on that particular PC in 2023? You do need to get yourself an x99 motherboard. This CPU has 6 cores, 12 threads running at 3.6 gigahertz. But of course that can be overclocked because this is a K-series CPU. Along with that, I'm going to be pairing this with an RX 6600 XT and I'm going to be using X99 motherboard which is an ASRock Extreme 4 and you can also use a Chinese X99 motherboard which will come in around about $60 so it would save you quite a bit of money. Your mileage may vary on those Chinese motherboards however. So, this is the specs that I'm using for this benchmark and I'm going to be testing quite a few games to see what the performance is like in 2023. So first up is Battlefield 5. I'm running this on ultra settings on 1080p resolution. I'm getting around about 130 FPS with the GPU and CPU paired up together. And Intel has really come out here with giving us some really good results. For some reason, the 1% lows were coming out at 1, 1 FPS. I have no idea why that's the case. Maybe some of your viewers can maybe leave some comments, give me some pointers as to why the 1% lows is coming up at 1 FPS. It doesn't make any sense in my mind. Frame time seems to be fairly stable within this benchmark and you can see that actually the game is running very smoothly. I will be in the future testing at 4K resolution with this setup and I'm going to be comparing between 1080p and what kind of FPS you can get at 4K. I would expect it to come in at around about 60 FPS at, FPS at least. And for $20 CPU, that's not bad going at all. The only problem with this setup is trying to get your hands on the X99 motherboard, which can be challenging. You can get ASRock or Gigabyte motherboards, but they are fairly old and they're known to have failed. A lot of the ones that you might find on eBay, for example, are broken. So you may want to try your hand at getting a Chinese motherboard. Those motherboards are very, but for $75, you can't go too wrong in terms of giving it a try. And at least that will last you a couple of years before we may need to buy another motherboard. But in this setup and in this game using an RX 6600 XT, it seems like the bottlenecks is fairly limited between the two. In this example, you can see actually the CPU is only running at around about 70%, whereas the GPU is completely maxed out. This game is GPU bound. So you could probably even go up to a 2080 RTX um, or even something even higher. So with modern GPUs, I think you can definitely run of this setup and use a modern GPU to run Battlefield 5. So now on to Cyberpunk. I just finished a mission where I needed to sort out this guy's appendage where he had a modified man piece and it kind of gone wrong. But after that I tried to run the game and actually it worked out pretty well. The FPS was lower in this game. I was getting around about 80 to 90 FPS with the lows of 24. Now in terms of bottlenecks between the CPU and GPU and again you can see that the GPU is being maxed out and only 60% of the CPU utilization in this game. So you could actually go up higher than the RX 6600 XT and in my future videos I'll be looking to get a more powerful GPU to see exactly how far up you can go and in terms of what scores you can get moving forwards. At the end of this video I will be going through some benchmarks to show you exactly what I can get on Firestrike and also on user benchmark. Now one downside of using the i7-5820K Broadwell CPU is that it is limited with the speed of RAM it is compatible with. 
The only RAM that you can use in terms of the highest performance RAM is DDR4 2133 MHz and you can't use any RAM higher than that. Although this motherboard will support faster RAM in that case so you will be using fairly slow RAM but in terms of this game and how it's running it's actually running really well. There were some frame drops that I observed during um, Cyberpunk but there were few and far between. Overall I think the performance came out really well. The game was running at ultra settings at 1080p and like I said for the last game we reviewed Battlefield 5 I will be testing 4k moving forwards to see what the difference is in terms of performance. Now running Forza Horizon 5, this game actually took forever to load. It took an absolute age and there was slows, dips in the game. But to be honest with you, I don't think that had anything, anything to do with the CPU or the GPU. I reckon it was to do with my slow hard drive that I was using to test all these games on. So again, another thing I need to change is to load all these games onto a large enough M.2 drive. And with that drive, it should be able to run pretty quick and also boot up very quickly as well. So that's another consideration that you need to make when you're doing your gaming setup is actually try and have a look to see if you can um, fit into your budget an SSD or an M.2 that can uh, run these games with a faster transfer speed for data between the CPU, GPU and your storage. So in terms of um, running Horizon 5, the frames per second again was running between 120 and 70. It was a little bit all over the place and again the 1% lows came in at zero. I have no idea why it's coming in at zero but there you go. Again, maybe you can explain to me why that is the case. CPU and GPU are running pretty cool. And again, the CPU is only running at around about 50% utilization, which is extremely low. So in all of these games that I've tested so far, I have only been testing games that are GPU bound, but I will be testing the games like Fortnite in a minute where it is CPU bound and see what the difference is between the two. Again, in this game, I'm running it at 1080p on ultra highest settings and overall I think it's definitely playable it runs really well um, you're getting high FPS for the, for Horizon 5 so nothing to really complain about here other than the slow storage Halo Infinite now I haven't played a Halo game in a very long time the last time I played Halo was probably ODST or maybe Halo 3 from many years ago so playing this was a bit of a throwback and it was a nice nostalgia piece for me anyway. I really like the grappling hook in this game. It makes the, the whole dynamics of the game completely different. Um, but at the beginning I had no idea what I was doing or where I was going. So forgive me when I'm just running around aimlessly having no idea where I am supposed to go. Anyway, running this game was again at around about 130-140 FPS with 1% lows at around about 35. Um, in terms of utilisation, again, um, the CPU is only being used around about 55% with the GPU being completely maxed out. Frame time, fairly stable throughout. There weren't any judders or stutters, funnily enough, even though it was on the same hard drive. So this game ran very smoothly indeed. I was very happy with the performance of this and again it is very smooth. So this is running at 1080p on the highest ultra settings and again I will come back again and try this in 4k and leave a review to see how it performs. So another win for the CPU 5820k and Intel has come out again with a really good winner. I'm really surprised that this CPU came out in 2014 and it's still performing so well in 2023. Who would have thought, hey? Now it's time to move on to Fortnite. Finally, a game that is dependent on the CPU, so it's really given the CPU a run for its money. So in this setting I'm running it at medium settings at 1080p so I did lower the graphics settings to see what kind of FPS I can get. At medium settings I'm getting around about 220 FPS which is very good indeed and even if I lowered it to low settings you're going to get well over 240 FPS in Fortnite. 
So in this game I was um, really happy with the performance. Again, the GPU is running at 90% utilization with only 70% being used by the CPU. Considering this game is heavily dependent on the CPU, it's actually running really well. In terms of frame time, there isn't actually any too many variables with that graph and it seems to be running really smooth with the pairing of the RX 6600 XT and the i7 5820K. So again, Intel has pulled another one out of their bag from 2014 and you know, I think this setup will be well suited for 2023 and even beyond. The thing is, is I think some people consider these older CPUs is not being as, as suited for some of the newer GPUs but actually in fact I think running these tests is quite a valuable proof in the pudding to show actually that old CPUs are still relevant. The X99 platform was actually a premium brand from 2014, it was one of the best um, platforms that you could use. Make sure when you do purchase the motherboard it's 2011 version 3 Otherwise, if you just get the standard standard X79 2011 LGA 2011 socket, um, the CPUs won't be compatible. So just be very careful when you're buying the CPU and pairing it with the X99 motherboard. And the last game, last but not least, is Valorant. So just testing the performance in this game. Again, you were getting around about 240 FPS. It wasn't as stable as some of the other games. So the FPS was running up and down. Actually, during gaming, it was around about 140, 150. And then it would peak every now and again. So it wasn't that stable. And again, I'm getting 1% lows of 0 FPS for some reason. Um, so you can clarify that for me. In terms of the temperatures, again, you know, you're getting around about 33, 42 degrees, but I am running this in my garage and it is winter in the UK. So very cold and that might not be representative of what you might experience in your home office or your gaming room. So you're, you might see a bit of a difference there. In terms of utilization, and this game is maxed out at ultra settings at 1080p, Again, I'm only using around about 50% of the um, performance of the gaming PC, so it has plenty more to give in terms of its performance. So I would say that you know you can definitely run Valorant easily on this setup. Even going up to 4K, you're probably going to look at the high, the mid hundreds in terms of FPS. So uh, definitely a thumbs up from me. Now talking about Valorant, I was actually pretty bad at this game. I was dying as soon as I saw somebody poke their head out. Um, so yeah, I was I was a loser on the team. I was dragging the team down. But I have to say the community from Valorant were really good. Actually, they were very supportive. And, you know, I'd highly recommend playing this game. And in fact, I will be playing this game much more moving forwards just because of the community and the people playing this game being so supportive. Now finally on to the benchmark. So I used user benchmark. This is a bit questionable in terms of how good it is, but I always like to run it just to see how my gaming PC is performing. It was overclocked at 4.3 gigahertz, so I was getting more performance out of my CPU than others. But you have to play the silicon lottery to see how you fare. In terms of the gaming, I got really good scores on this. Um, so overall, very happy with that outcome. Now moving on to Firestrike, this was um, using the CPU and GPU test running at 1080p and I got 213454 which again is a very good result and looking at the comparisons actually this was compared to a Ryzen 7 3700X and yes it is slower than a 3700X but actually the performance isn't that far away from that CPU. I checked the price and I was surprised to see it was actually worth £120 which is about $140 and you can buy both the CPU and motherboard for that price. And that's the end for me. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.